Goedenavond, dames en heren. Welkom op AZ Night uh, nummer Helene, hoeveel? 12. Uh, Goedenavond, uh, welkom op uh, de AZ Night. Uh, ik ben Jan Boele, ik ben artistiek directeur van Z33. En uh, vanavond pre presenteren we AZ Night onder de noemer Housing the Human. Het is een project waar dat we ongeveer anderhalf jaar aan hebben gewerkt met verschillende partijen. En uh, eigenlijk keek ik er heel fel naar uit om vanavond hier te zijn. Uh, maar als ik eerlijk ben, had ik nu graag in de Beursschouwburg in Brussel willen zijn. De Beursschouwburg... Be, uh, uh, daar is op dit moment een soort actievergadering aan de, aan, uh, bezig om de cultuursubsidies uh, of de aankondiging rond de cultuursubsidies uh, die verminderd gaan worden om daar tegen de komende weken uh, met heel de cultuursector tegen te reageren. Ik denk dat dat een, uh, uh, een noodzakelijke vergadering is. En ik vind het heel spijtig dat ik niet bij mijn collega's kan zijn. Langs de andere kant ben ik ook wel blij om vanavond hier te zijn. Housing the Human. Uh, Housing the Human is een traject uh, dat samen uh, is afgelegd uh, met een geïnitieerd is geweest door... And I'm going to start now to talk in English, uh, because the most of the, the people that will talk today cannot uh, and uh, will not uh, do their lecture in English. Freo Meyer uh, from Forecast in Berlin, he initiated Housing the Human. He came to me with a question for setting up a long-term uh, uh, research project, a research project that was about prototyping housing uh, kind of futures, possible futures in itself. Um, why uh, in this moment uh, in uh, where ecology, environmental issues, technology, uh, commodification and uh, very hard a uh, neoliberal uh, market is changing the way we are living and will live in the future itself. So that was uh, why we started to collaborate together, not only with Forecast and Z33, but also the Copenhagen Architecture Festival, a very interesting architecture festival, and uh, Pippo Ciora, curator of Maxi in Rome, but also initiator of the Dimignano architecture uh, festival. Um, we made like literally a tour uh, from Italy to Berlin, Istanbul, uh, Copenhagen, Berlin, and we ended today literally here in Hasselt, uh, where we made a kind of evaluation of the last one year and a half exercises, prototyping that we did together with five um, participants that were selected out of a group of 15. So a long list became a short list. And together with them uh, and uh, um, some mentors, we ended up uh, with these five projects. It's a kind of talent development project that we as Set33 uh, like to support. That means that uh, uh, at this moment, uh, you can also see still uh, format um, format that is in the, the gallery uh, in, uh, in Z33, and it will end the 24th of November, but there is also a future uh, collaboration or platform for more contemporary artists uh, that will uh, start next year around half of March. So Z33 not only makes exhibitions, also is interested in talent development in the widest world around contemporary art, architecture and design. Today, though, we will present uh, five practices, five very diverse practices uh, that in one way or another are also very complementary with each other um, that will these presentations will approximately between 10 to 15 minutes. Then uh, probably I will ask a kind of a question and we will jump into uh, Wiede, his mind, to hear, to see what he is doing uh, at uh, and the left uh, of me. Uh, 
And um, so I'm very curious what is coming out of that. We start, and three presentations will be live. Um, four, in fact, uh, Lucia Tahan is not here. She is uh, still in Berlin. She missed her flight uh, in Berlin. And uh, Myling Loco uh, is also not here, but uh, made a kind of video presentation. We start today with uh, Lucia Tahan. She is a Berlin-based architecture practice that deploys human experience design in spatial and digital systems. She has produced work ranging from software to critical writing while developing architecture projects and exhibitions as speculative political tools. The house work is a desire to blend methodologies from digital disciplines with architecture systems. Her work was displayed and appeared in Chicago, Lisbon, Seoul, and Rome. I have to go behind this plinth um, because cloud housing, and now she sees me, I can wave to her. Um, so she is online now, I see myself. <laughs> we can switch, Lucia. Uh, the floor is yours, and a big applause for Lucia Tahoe. Uh, thank you very much, Jan, for the introduction, and uh, thank you very much to the public for being here tonight. Uh, I wish I could be with you. Um, and uh, thank you for uh, this one-year journey that I'm about to present now, and that has uh, taken me and all of the participants uh, into uh, self-discovery and the discovery of our work and uh, beautiful moments of, of uh, interdisciplinarity. Um, so my name is Lucia Tahan, and my project is called Cloud Housing. I'm going to present today three mixed reality installations that I developed over the course of a year with Housing the Human program. The first step of this journey is at HKW in Berlin, the fall of 2018, uh, where I presented a, a box that was meant for people to draw uh, home spaces in it from memory using an augmented reality application. Um, this is an exercise in user testing, but it's also an exercise in uh, reduction, reduction of architecture to, uh, to, to and simplification and, uh, and also disappearance. Um, there's nothing uh, left of architecture here, not even scale. And yet uh, we can see how uh, when people are asked to to, um, to draw in space, they are actually able to engage with the space as if it uh, were real, as if uh, in their memory they could still see their home. For me, this creates a very clear tension uh, where we can strip architecture of a lot of it and still, in our minds as humans, um, domestic space could still uh, possibly exist. In the second uh, iteration, the second stop of the journey is at the Istanbul Biennial, a school of schools in the fall of 2018, where I started investigating where uh, digital architecture uh, or the, the cross-pollination of, of digital objects within uh, uh, architecture, uh, with the, within the, the, the uh, development of, of housing, um, could, could take the practice and uh, the architectural discipline. So uh, drawing from uh, things like users or understanding architecture as an infrastructure for digital content to be laid out on top of it, um, I started questioning uh, paradigms such as the tensions between uh, form and function to introduce uh, more complexity derived from um, uh, tech design practices such as uh, experience or community or real space versus labor versus applications and how the digital forms a layer um, that captures all of those uh, realms. Um, in the journey towards materializing this, I created a, a brand for the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Arts called Cloud Housing, um, which presented itself as a, as a kind of uh, um, tech company of the future that would offer housing on demand. This was presented as uh, a video installation, as you can see, 
um, but it also uh, contained a virtual reality application that is kind of the opposite of, of the box I showed in the beginning. And here, everything is uh, seamless and uh, the interface has taken over. Everything is digital. And, uh, and, and uh, the content that you see here is actually very dystopian. The prompts for the user are about things like being evicted because there is surge pricing. Um, and the slogans that you see floating around in the interface um, deal with uh, our, our tra direct translations of slogans that tech companies are using today. So with this work, I wanted to highlight um, uh, our uh, reading of interfaces as objects of design that we can also be critical about. Um, and the last step of the journey is at Radial System in Berlin uh, in the fall of 2019 where um, my ambition was to uh, present an installation that would blend uh, physical objects with digital objects. And uh, my inspiration for this work, or one of my references, was the work of Cedric Price and his uh, Pan Palace. Uh, this was a project um, that's already several decades old, but still relevant because it reduces architecture to scaffolding for content and for activity, much like uh, a technological platform does. Um, and so this is the, the room that I presented in Berlin. And uh, this room was activated uh, with uh, an augmented reality application that was installed in an iPad. And you can see here how the public was given this iPad. And then uh, they were walked through three different interactions that I'm about to explain now. The first interaction um, is a reality slider. So in the reality slider, when reality is, is pulled up to the personal level, then uh, users don't only see notifications about um, their furniture and usage data, but they are also interlacing um, their living space with digital objects and artifacts and content that they've created or downloaded. Um, which uh, opens new possibilities uh, for the integration of, of new forms of architecture that it would be highly personalized. Um, but it also, but with, with this slider, I'm also interested in the interface itself and, and to question the role of language uh, within this interface where reality or things like personal and balanced um, are, you know, we, we may just take them for granted, but they very much uh, inform of our understanding of, uh, of the physical world. Um, the second interaction is um, about advertising. Um, so as soon as the home or the architecture is open to contain digital artifacts, then the door is open for advertisements to appear in there. They don't have to be as obvious as these. Um, in fact, the advertisement of the future is just, it's going to be more and more um, apparent to us. But um, this application is not necessarily functional in the sense that um, some of the things that I'm showing here, you would never see in uh, an actual functional app. And one very good example of this is uh, this uh, scene where I am um, showing a toggle between the interface and spatial data. And this tries to explain a concept uh, called AR cloud, which means that for every augmented reality um, application to exist, there needs to be a 3D model powering it underneath. Uh, we may never see that model but it will contain an unprecedented amount of data about uh, the architecture we live in, the spaces and the way we engage with them. And uh, it will open up questions about privacy, um, the gradation of, of, of private versus public spaces. Um, and all those questions are, I think, uh, very relevant to architectural practice. Um, so by showing things that would necessarily, not necessarily be seen in a, in, in a commercial app. Um, my aim is to 
make the public that came to the exhibitions reflect on uh, the role as users of, of technology. I'm just going to play here another video of, uh, of the installation. And uh, the reason why I think uh, that it is uh, relevant to talk about um, the, the intersection of, of uh, digital content and, uh, and architecture uh, is because, um, you see, arch the architectural discipline has a baggage, a cultural baggage and a historical baggage that um, is very much lacking in, in tech discourse, which is a very much, much more optimistic uh, and sometimes um, um, a discourse that is, that is plagued with ingenuity. Um, and so architects will be asked to provide a support for digital content, and in fact they are today. Um, they will have to confront questions such as, shall we build architecture for advertising to be overlaid on it? Um, and then uh, technologists are also going to be confronted with the definition uh, of things like a reality slider or what is an interface versus what is data. Um, and, uh, and, and so it is necessary to, for both disciplines to come closer together and understand each other. Um, and that's it. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed uh, the presentations and uh, I hope that whenever you see and engage with augmented reality applications or with any interfaces, you remember that this was designed by someone and that you play a role in the definition of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Lucia. Lucia, uh, I would like that you are that you can stay a little bit here. Uh, I have a question because, um, for me, due to the the projection, um, um, yes, there you are. Um, hi, Lucia. Uh, due to the projection, a critical layer was missing: the notifications. Uh, could you please uh, explain that uh, and say uh, what happened, in fact, in the experience uh, when people walked through uh, uh, with the app uh, through the space itself? Um, so apart from engaging with digital content, uh, there was also there were also notifications popping up in the screen, which um, were. They were the voice of the home. Uh, so the home was asking for attention. It was asking for engagement. Uh, it was self-aware. So it was able to um, explain to you how long you have been on the sofa and whether you needed help because you had been for too long on the sofa or whether there were bugs, whether virtual or physical in the space. Um, but it also asked for more and more of your attention and your engagement uh, just like uh, today's attention-based platforms do. Yeah. So how far is your uh, project, uh, let's say, bouncing or balancing between a critical and a commercial uh, practice? Uh? Um, I think it is important to keep a foot on both worlds um, because the commercial... So right now, technology is moving so fast, uh, commercial technology, uh, that there is hardly any time for, for critical thinking. And uh, it seems sometimes that the critical world is, um, is, is going at another speed in parallel. And uh, it is necessary to cross-pollinate both. So in my practice as a, as a commercial designer of interfaces, I reflect on those things um, I advocate for them, uh, but also it is important for me to bring those ideas to the public and also um, to explain them in forums such as Housing the Human, where many architects are, um, are fi finding discourse and finding ideas that otherwise they wouldn't be exposed to. Good. Thank you very much, Lucia. Uh, Probably we won't hear you again uh, anymore, uh, but uh, thank you and uh, see you. Uh, I want to, maybe that's something you still, we can share that, I uh, hope we can. Uh, Rida, we have here somebody who's making a, a very analog uh, 
uh, augmented uh, reality uh, and Vida is making drawings of uh, our conversations. Um, probably you cannot see, but we will send some, I'm sure we will send some pictures to you uh, about this. Uh, and Vida, what is this? Uh, this is a drawing. Yeah. <laughs> <of> a <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was contemplating about uh, the people who can design their own homes but they do it with the grid in mind and the, the grid is something that you don't see so they're very proud of the grid uh, and, uh, so yeah you should see the grid <laughs> okay uh, and there goes the commercial i was working on this so if it's not finished, uh, don't be critical so yeah um, the augmented reality i know nothing about so in my mind it looks like this um <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I, I like the idea of the tension between form and function, like being a, a wrestle match or something. <laughs> Again, my mind is very analog. Uh, and it was something I thought of because we heard the voice of her, <laughs> uh, but we saw nothing. So it was like big brother or something, or big God mother. God there was there, God speaks with the voice of a woman, Lucia. That's, uh, so yeah. that's you. That's true. Say. <laughs> and this <Or> was Siri. <laughs> Siri, Siri, or Alexa, yeah, yeah, Alex like Lucia. Yeah. So yeah, and this was uh, the concept of the, the whole thing, the, the fellowship of the housing, it rhymes with fellowship of the ring. So, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> uh, I'm, really I'm sorry, really gets stupid from now on. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna skip these. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you, Wide.